The area around New Magic, Missouri has been the site of some of the largest earthquakes in North America. Between 1811 and 1812, there were four catastrophic earthquakes with magnitude estimates greater than 7.0. The largest earthquakes occurring here since 1812 were on January 4, 1843 and October 31, 1895 with magnitude estimates of 6.0 and 6.6 .6 respectively. Instruments for monitoring seismic activity were installed in and around this area in 1974. Since then, more than 4,000 small earthquakes have been detected. Because of the ongoing hazard presented by the New Madrid Fault, schools in this region are required to have earthquake response procedures. Chapter 160 of the revised statutes of the state of Missouri calls for schools throughout Missouri to prepare for earthquakes. Section 455 requires that all schools in Missouri annually distribute to each student material on earthquake safety as prepared by the State Emergency Management Agency. Section 453 requires that schools located in 47 counties conduct two earthquake exercises each year. We are going to Kennett, Missouri, 40 miles southwest of New Madrid, to watch the middle school conduct their earthquake exercise. In some areas of Missouri, including Kennett, the unique geology will actually amplify the shaking of the ground surface during an earthquake. The amplified intensity of a high magnitude earthquake could cause sand blows, landslides, the collapse of stream banks, and widespread liquefaction destabilizing the ground surface in this area. The shaking could also cause large parts of masonry buildings to collapse, reservoirs to be seriously damaged, and some underground pipes to break. Injuries and casualties can drastically be reduced if the proper seismic structural and non-structural mitigation is applied to buildings and infrastructure within the earthquake hazard zones. Trained engineers and architects are able to conduct seismic evaluations of existing buildings. The evaluations are performed according to recognized procedures developed by the Federal Emergency Management Agency. An evaluation will indicate the parts of the building that might be damaged by a strong earthquake and the likelihood of the damage leading to collapse. This can lead to a plan to retrofit the structure in order to improve the survivability in an earthquake. Retrofit plans are often implemented as part of a more general remodeling when the added costs are likely to be less than for a procedure that focuses exclusively on seismic upgrading. Also, the evaluation includes consideration of non-structural components such as light fixtures, bookcases, and suspended ceilings. These items can fall on victims or crush them against a wall, resulting in injury or even death. Many of these hazards can be reduced or eliminated by maintenance personnel. Regardless of a school building's ability to withstand an earthquake, schools must have procedures in place to safeguard students and staff during an earthquake and for the hours or days following the earthquake. And, like the Kennett Middle School, Missouri schools should practice those earthquake safety procedures often. Today's exercise objectives are to respond to the earthquake, to respond to the aftershocks, to evacuate the buildings, to activate the incident command system, to check emergency response teams in their staging areas, and to establish a double-gated family reunification site. We are conducting the drill during the regular school day and have invited parents who are available to participate in the reunification procedure. Because of concerns about items falling from the ceiling, or walls, or shelving during an earthquake and aftershocks, we practice the drop, cover, and hold procedure. When an earthquake strikes, the students in the classroom know what to do. We've gone uh, many duties and responsibilities. Teachers, we are conducting an earthquake drill at this time. If this was a real earthquake, you would initiate drop, cover, and hold procedures whenever you detected ground shaking. Practice those procedures at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we're having an earthquake. Please drop and cover. Please be sure that you protect 
your face and neck, your head, the vulnerable parts of your body. Hold on to your desk. Be sure your face and neck is turned from the window. The teacher moves to open the door while giving the students direction. The door is normally closed for security purposes. It is opened at the first indication of an earthquake to guard against the door becoming blocked or jammed, trapping those inside the classroom. Remain absolutely quiet. In the event we were having a real earthquake, there's the possibility for flying glass. So please protect your eyes and face from any flying glass. I think it's safe to stand and check your buddy now. Take a moment to really look your buddy over. Make sure they're okay. There is an aftershock. Please drop and cover again. Hold tight to the desk. Protect the back of your neck and your head. Stay calm. Keep your face and eyes covered. If an earthquake is experienced when students are outside, the adult in charge moves them away from the building and other potential hazards to the safest available location where they drop and cover. We will quietly and calmly prepare to evacuate the building. Take a book to protect your head from any falling debris. Please fall quietly. Ms. Bowen, is your room okay? Each teacher is assigned a buddy teacher, usually the teacher in the classroom next door or across the hall. After the earthquake, the teachers check in with each other to see if any help is needed. If one classroom has some injured students, the other teacher can assist with the evacuation. During the evacuation, one teacher leads and the buddy trails the combined classrooms. Each teacher at Kennett Middle School carries a classroom standard operating guideline, the class roll, and an emergency go bucket out of the building during evacuations. The go bucket contains bottles of water, a flashlight, and other emergency supplies. Students drop. We are experiencing another aftershock. We have a hardcover book or notebook with you. Use it to protect the back of your neck and head. Remain in that position until further instructions. If an aftershock is experienced during the evacuation, students immediately drop and cover next to the hallway wall. If they are under a large window, they move to a safe place away from the window and drop. Without talking, all right, everyone get up. Check yourself and your body. Raise your hand for help. Okay, continue moving to the outside assembly area without talking. In the assembly area, the principal makes sure that every class has arrived and the teachers take role. Teachers signal green if they have all of their students and everything is okay. Teachers signal red if they are missing students, have injured students, have extra students, or need to have help with some other problem. Some teachers serve on emergency response teams. After they have their students safely located in the assembly area, they signal green and then turn over their roll and their classroom go bucket to their buddy room teacher. They take their emergency response team equipment and report to their assigned team staging area. Kennett Middle School has five emergency response teams with capabilities needed until the professional emergency responders arrive. Team members keep their vests with them in the classroom. Most teams have special equipment that is stored in a shed outside the school building. Search and Rescue has green helmets and vests. They secure their backpacks in their vehicles. The Search and Rescue team sizes up the damage to the building, shuts off utilities as necessary, and, if safe, checks throughout the building for anyone left behind. Security has yellow helmets and vests. They establish a perimeter around the damaged building and the family reunification site. First Aid has white vests. Their supplies are stored in wheeled trash cans that are sealed and positioned in each part of the school building. The trash cans are evacuated with the students by designated staff members. If there are injured students or staff members, the First Aid team will take care of them. 
mental health has no uniform vest. They separate out any students or staff members who may be traumatized or unable to cope. Family reunification has blue vests. They are responsible for managing the double-gated reunification process. When the team leader for each emergency response team has taken team role and checked equipment, the team leader reports to the incident commander at the command post, reports team status, and awaits assignment. For today's drill, only the family reunification team and the security team will be exercised as they set up for a double-gated family reunification at the school location. As parents begin arriving, they are directed to the parent report point, where their identification is verified against the emergency release paperwork for their children. Student runners then carry a copy of the reunification form to the student holding area. The family reunification team member managing the student holding area receives the reunification form and logs the student out, sending the student with the runner to the student release point. The parent then signs for the student. It is the job of the family reunification team to know at any point in time how many students are in the student holding area, how many are in the first aid treatment area, how many are with the mental health team, and how many have been properly released. Hopefully the numbers add up to the complete role for the school and no one is missing or unaccounted for. It falls to the search and rescue team to locate any missing students. The search and rescue team is trained in assessing structural damage. No one re-enters the building following an earthquake until cleared by the search and rescue team. After each exercise, the school leadership conducts an after-action review determining if the exercise objectives were achieved, what went well, what should be done differently next time, and what changes should be made in the plans. Scientists tell us many Missourians are likely to experience a significant earthquake during their lifetime. It's important for all of us, especially those in facilities such as schools, to know what to do in those critical moments during an earthquake. Knowing when and how to drop, cover, and hold is a vital part of preparing for such an event. We're grateful to the students and staff at Kennett Middle School for providing us this demonstration. If you have questions, please contact your local emergency management director or the earthquake program manager at the state emergency management agency in Jefferson City.